What's up, fight fans? Welcome back to Sports Kita MMA News. Hamzat Shamaya fires back at Nate Diaz for calling him an injured. <laughs> Tony Ferguson shares a positive message after his loss at UFC 274 and proceeds to reply to Conor McGregor's insults. The Sugar Show thinks that Cheeto Vera has earned a rematch and he predicts his championship trajectory. Henry Cejudo says what everyone thought about the strawweight title fight at UFC 274. And UFC legend Joe Lozon describes all the money he lost from Cowboy Cerrone's pullout. All this and more on today's edition of Sports Kita MMA News. If you see any of your favorite fighters mentioned in today's video, make sure to blast that like button. Let's get started. Yesterday, Nate Diaz roasted Hamzat Shemaev and Conor McGregor saying they were on the injured list. The undefeated Hamzat Shemaev is no stranger to some Twitter warfare. He's called out absolutely everyone at this point. Here is Hamzat's reaction to Nate Diaz. You're not ashamed to open your mouth at all. You refuse to fight 10 times, Nate Diaz. This exchange is just an aftershock of the recent UFC drama surrounding some pretty fire-leaked matchups, one of them being Shamaya vs. Diaz. Now that Diaz has announced that he is fighting on July 30th, MMA fans continue to speculate as to who his opponent could be. The 21-13 Diaz has been pining for a money fight and is uninterested in anything less, despite getting handled by Leon Edwards back at UFC 263. The 11-0 Hamzat Shamayev put Gerald Mearshart to sleep in 17 seconds and choked Li Jingliang to sleep in just under a round. He has never even made it to the third round in his career until he ran into the tough-as-nails Gilbert Burns. What do you think the odds are of Nate Diaz submitting Hamzat Shamayev? Leave a comment down below and you might be featured in tomorrow's video. We can all sigh in relief now that we know that our beloved Kikui is okay. Recently, Tony Ferguson was in good spirits despite getting absolutely sparked at UFC 274 courtesy of a Michael Chandler front kick. Ferguson congratulated Chandler on Twitter. Congratulations to Michael Chandler on his victory at UFC 274. Had lots of fun in there. You fans are f***ing wild. I love this shit. Feels good to be back and hungry again. We were just getting started. Best of luck in your next fight, champ. For the love of the game, champ only. It's good to see Tony reclaim the championship mentality that allowed him to tear apart the lightweight division, finishing 9 out of his 12 fight win streak. Ferguson then decided to respond to Conor McGregor, who said that he resembled a chicken nugget right out of a McDonald's bag. Here's what Tony had to say to McGregor. Ah, there's my bitch. Next time, tag me, bitch. Coming after you and your crew. McNugget stays with you, fake. Can't take what not your ya anymore, thief. Still got no sauce and no bitch, McNuggets. I'll see you and your crew coming soon after your gold leprechaun. Champ, aka El Savvy. Champ only. Then, Tony sent his good graces to former lightweight champion Charles Oliveira, who dispatched Justin Gaethje in under a round, but was ineligible to win the belt due to missing weight by half a pound. Charles Oliveira called Tony Ferguson a brother and consoled him for his loss, and Ferguson replied back, I'm glad you listened. Way to stay focused, Chuck. Champ only. Don't let your team let you miss weight again, okay buddy? We'll see you soon, kid. Be good, champ. Now, the 26-7 Ferguson is at a bit of a career crossroads, his fourth consecutive loss, and it wasn't a pretty one. Yet before the vicious knockout, we saw a full round of the old Tony. Who knows at this point, Uncle Dana has some thinking to do. Should Tony Ferguson take another year off? The Sugar Show never really accepted his loss to Cheeto Vera back at UFC 252, and now seeing Vera in the top five of his own division might have lit a fire under him. Sean O'Malley was recently a guest on the MMA Hour and gave a confident summary of what his plans are for the bantamweight division. The 15-1 Sean O'Malley's excellent striking has netted him 5 knockouts in 7 victories inside the octagon, most recently a first round finish over Julian Paiva. Here's what O'Malley said about his future. Two more finishes, early 2023, I'm fighting for the belt, whoever has it. I think uh, after this fight, I go out there, you know, I got to finish Pedro. And I go out there, say I finished Pedro, I get, you know, a top five guy, whoever that is. Depending on if Cheeto gets a fight book, I know that's a fight that I want. Then O'Malley called out his nemesis, who unfortunately ruined an unblemished MMA record. Here's what he said about Cheeto Vera. 
Well, I, I, in the past, I said he's got to earn a rematch, and, and I think he's done that. He went out there, lost to Jose Aldo, went out there, lost to Frankie Edgar, and then beat him with, you know, he basically lost. He lost 13 minutes of a fight. He finished Frankie. Two more minutes in that fight, you know, he loses that. But but I will, I'll say. He, he, he knocked out Frankie. Then he went out there and he looked really good against Rob. So, yeah, he, he definitely proved that he's earned that rematch. People hate when I say that, I but really uh, it's true. He earned it. Interesting words from the man who sits eight spots below Cheeto in the bantamweight rankings. Now that O'Malley vs. Pedro Munoz is in the works for UFC 267, he aims to bridge that gap and prove that he also belongs among elite bantamweights. Does the Cheeto rematch make sense for O'Malley? The King of Cringe has made his verdict about the recent shit show that was Rose Namajunas vs. Carla Esparza. Henry Cejudo recently spoke about the strawweight title fight at UFC 274 where fans saw almost no action throughout 25 minutes, barring a takedown or two from the champ Carla Esparza. Here's what Cejudo had to say. That was absolutely terrible. It reminded me of like two people trying to do a capoeira where they literally weren't hitting each other. The worst fight in UFC history, not even a championship fight, the worst fight in UFC history. Then Cejudo took the opportunity to remind fans that the division is not lost yet. Teammate and former champion Zhang Weili is still a force to be reckoned with. Here's what Cejudo said. With Wei Li coming in, she's going to be moving out to Arizona, man. So with her coming out here and then being at fight ready full time, man, you can put anybody in front of that girl. I promise you, man, her wrestling's going to get better. I impose my philosophy, my training regiments with her. And I think it's just a matter of time before, you know, you are going to be hearing and you from Zhang Wei Li. A savage Sanda striker with Olympic level wrestling training? I shudder in fear for the strawweight division. The 21-3 Zhang Weili is scheduled to fight former strawweight queen Joanna Youngjacek at UFC 275, a rematch of the most historic fight in women's MMA history. If Weili asserts her dominance over Joanna, perhaps she can earn a third try at now number one contender Rose Namajunas. What's your predictions for the UFC strawweight division? While you're still here, subscribe to Sports Kita MMA and hit that bell. And last but not least, UFC legend Joe Lozon has never been in a boring fight. Just let his 15 post-fight bonuses speak for themselves. But unfortunately, Lozon couldn't display his octagon ferocity because fellow UFC legend Cowboy Cerrone had a tummy ache. In all seriousness, the 36-16 veteran was forced to pull out due to food poisoning. Lesson learned, don't eat tacos in Phoenix, Arizona. Lozon told Ariel Hawani that he had a feeling he wouldn't fight at UFC 274, which would have been the opening act of the main card. Here's what Lozon had to say about the situation. For two days, I kept saying I had this gut feeling this fight's not going to happen. I've never felt like this before. I feel like it's the stupidest thing. I know Cowboy would show up and fight with a broken leg, but I got this weird gut feeling this fight is not going to happen. Then Lozon detailed the consequences of not fighting. I think that they're going to give me my show money and I'll get the Venom uniform money. I think that my show money is $74,000, so I'll get $74,000 and I'll get $21,000, but honestly, I didn't even get the chance. I could have not trained and showed up and gotten kicked in the face and gotten $95,000. It wasn't about that. I wanted to get that win money. I wanted to get that bonus money. It could have easily been a $230,000 weekend. Very, very easily. The fights weren't great on the card. We could have easily gotten fight of the night. We could have had performance bonuses. It could have been a $300,000 weekend like that. When number one and number two on the all-time post-fight bonus list are scheduled to fight, how could it go any other way? The 28 and 15 Lozon has been in the UFC for 16 years and fought some of the most tenured fighters to ever grace the octagon, including Jim Miller, Clay Guida, and Jeremy Stevens. What's your favorite Joe Lozon moment? That about does it for Sports Kita MMA News. Here are some of the best comments from today. I like O'Malley, but Vera is on to bigger and better things. Give Nate that five rounder. Chandler is quite possibly the most respectable guy in MMA right now. If you like this video, please like, comment, and share. Your comments could be featured in the next Sports Kita MMA news video. We always deliver daily content, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on anything going on in the MMA world. For updates, quotes, and exclusive interviews from all your favorite fighters, follow Sports Kita MMA on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for tuning in.